why would, why are you recommending other things to me right now? I'm trying to focus. I'm not here to fall down the void. The public void. Nailed it. We did it. That's the intro. Screw it. That's the video. Pack it up. Roll boys. credits. We're going home. Hey guys, welcome back to Bill and Chill Gaming. <laughs> it's the gaming channel. Go check that out. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bill and this is Trying to Stand Where I Try New Things in Pop Culture because I've been living under a rock. Nailed it. I'm going to be listening to the music of Penelope Scott for the first time. I've been getting a lot of suggestions recently in the comments. Thank you guys for leaving suggestions along with songs to help me figure out what I should probably do next. Uh, they're always helpful when I'm selecting things, so leave a comment. Like the video, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications so you're notified for uploads and all the other good stuff, blah blah blah, YouTube words. And don't forget, there are links in the description for education and resources on Black Lives Matter, the Trevor Project, and mental health resources and crisis lines should you or someone you know need them. I don't know anything about you, Penelope Scott, but everyone has been saying nice things. We're gonna be starting with sweet hibiscus tea. Hibiscus, 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 hibiscus? It's fine. To my knowledge, I don't see any music videos, um, so I'm gonna be just kind of following along with a lyric page. Oh yeah, the rules are I get one listen and then the lyrics page. No context from the artist, who they are, what they do, what they've said about the song. So anyway, sweet hibiscus tea. Grande, light ice. No, I brought my own straw, thank you. I can't do anything right. Oh no, no, what, what happened to your clavicle? Not your protagonist, I'm not even my own. I Ooh. Don't know what I need. Ooh. Are we okay? <laughs> that's a lot of stuff to process, but like, that's also, that's how life works. You're always at your oldest. I didn't mean that to sound so sad. I don't know what I need. Mm, I need more of that riff. Damn, like, yeah, just let it out. Feel what you're feeling. It's okay to be upset or stressed or overwhelmed. Oh wow, that ended so abruptly. Ah, uh, loud ad, loud ad, right in my headphones. It's okay, ads are fine. It's how you support people. It was really interesting. It just, it like kind of took you on that, trajectory is the wrong word, but like that lack of trajectory, like that kind of like snowballing kind of effect. Taking in a lot and like starting to get kind of like overwhelmed and I could feel like the lashing out sounds so aggressive, but like pulling at other things, like this is all the other stuff that's bothering me. And it just felt stressed. Like it even starts with like, I can't do anything right. And it's like, I'm not your protagonist. I'm not even my own. I like that lyric. I don't even know what I don't know. Kind of venting or letting it all kind of out. That ending sentiment of like, I don't know what I need. I don't know what's going to help. I hope the tea helps. We talked about it, but like it's lukewarm. Minus the fact that we say that it's 85 degrees outside in the lyrics, like it's lukewarm. Like I couldn't tell you if that's helpful or not. You know, either it's it's iced tea that's been neglected in the heat or it's, it's hot tea that's, you know, just kind of cooling down. That's kind of where this takes me emotionally. Like it, it feels like all this stuff is kind of combining and starting to like kind of overlap. And like I said, just kind of like, overflow, but I liked how it felt chaotic musically as well. I could feel like the frustration kind of start to build and I could feel everything try to kind of collect back, but also acknowledging those faces of it. Like I really liked feeling the headspace. The, like it, it starts in such a place of self and then it starts to be observational about the things around. Like it makes me think about like when I start to get upset and like I start to kind of point out the other things that like the, the things I don't know, the thing that's frustrating me right now, but then also the things I do know about that I can't individually control, climate change and things like that. It felt like something that needed to just kind of like get out of you. Again, the lukewarm tea like really just hits me in this place of like something that m might be working isn't or maybe even touching on a little bit of neglect because that's what lukewarm tea would be. Like I said, hot or cold. I've talked about this tea way too much, but it's the titular thing. I'm not your protagonist. I'm not even my own. You, you're trying to figure out your own stuff right now. And I, I really like the way that that felt musically too. Like it felt not like back offish, but like a confident assertion. Like it had like a powerful presence to it that I really liked. It feels like a lot of change and a lot of just like, over, like I said, like that overwhelming feeling. The walls are empty, it's so ugly. I could burn the whole place down. It wouldn't catch cause all the posters are on their way to my hometown. Are you moving back home? 
Oh, maybe, okay, hear me out. Like the lukewarm tea, maybe it feels like you're in some kind of limbo and you're wanting this part of your life to just like hurry up and go. But like looking around at like the empty walls, you know, like the personality, like the personal touches that you put around you, that comfort is kind of gone right now. Like you're about to move and it looks like you're about to move back unless you shipped your posters away for some reason, which I had to do that once. I have a lot. Um, just trying to process so much internally while there's a lot externally going on. Cause I feel like this is indicative of, if not about 2020 and now 2021, like I have a hard time processing my personal stuff, knowing that there's so much else like universally that's just getting added to and so much is going on that sometimes I do neglect myself. Sometimes I am the T. I think it's about trying to process external and internal at once and that kind of overwhelming feeling. And it's like that feeling of everything that I find comforting is either not working or not in this room or boxed up and gone and just trying to like express it, just exude that energy and get it out. And you can really feel it in the piano. Like it starts to really like kind of get chaotic. I love the riff on, I don't know what I need. I love that that's the biggest exclamation here. Feels like while expressing yourself, kind of relinquishing some sort of feeling of responsibility from the person listening that like they need to step in and do something like it, it kind of feels like either a request for space or just an acknowledgement of I don't know and I think that I don't know is the feeling throughout this whole thing I don't know if that wasn't meant for 2020 slash 2021 it's spooky that was super interesting well this one's gonna be a fun bop next is American Healthcare parentheses glitzy glitzy yeah, glitzy. Thought there was a K in there for a second. Why am I questioning and second guessing myself? Confidence, positive attitude. Hello? It's like a spooky Atari game. I like it though. Seven years old, I saw a dead man in the road. Jesus! Ugh. I just think they should feel good while they are alive. Valid, very valid. Oh, yep. God damn. It's a sobering sentiment. It kind of bangs though. I did not become a doctor for this. Yeah, valid. Jesus. Okay, Phantom of the Healthcare statement. Oh my God. Thank you for that. The way it's mixed, it's like, then the vocals are getting drowned out. Like nobody's listening. I mean, fuck. Like I didn't want a song that was like, LOL, like let's pick up our prescription. Yeah, shout out to all the essential workers, especially those in the medical field. I just think they should feel good while they're alive. Every time it had this like feeling of like, while they're alive, like, you know, can I go? Like it had that like energy to it of like kind of shutting somebody else down or like flicking it back. Both songs kind of did it where it's like you can feel the energy of like what these lyrics would do as part of a conversation. And I love that liveliness to the inflection. The organ piano started to happen. It made me think of while you're feeling all of this, like more bad news, more death, more terminal cases coming your way. And it's like, it's very much a labor of love for people in that world, like you're doing so much, right? And especially stating it so clearly, and it's not even a focus on like a fantasy of, I'm gonna help people live forever. It's like, no, I'm gonna help people feel comfortable. I'm gonna help people when they're sick. The character, the point of view of the song, showing how much sludge and gunk gets mixed in on that path. Like it really like hurt. That determination to stay focused, but like being so fed up. And it it put me in this place of like somebody still working. Like I said, like when that musical break hit, it felt like there was another like, I watched Scrubs, so I know three words, like a crash cart came in, right? Or it's like someone's vitals needed to be taken again. Like it made me feel like everything had to stop you still feel this way, but it's like time to time to help, time to save. And then continuing on the sentiment, it's like, even if everything was perfect, you know, we're financed and supplied by rainbows and candy. It's like, it's still dealing with a very intense thing, like someone's health and life and death. And then just adding all of this in and then it's like, but what are you gonna do? Like, are you just gonna stop helping people? Like, it's almost like the system takes advantage of the fact that you care that much. It made me really admire, like, the POV. I appreciate you for talking about it if you are a medical professional or were. Back at you, Penelope Scott. I 
I don't know your life, but I really felt that that uh, admiration for why somebody would get into that kind of field. I really loved it. It was interesting how it's, it felt so exciting and like, ooh, at the top, but then like it, it got darker and it, I didn't, I almost forgot starting in that like Atari sound effect-y kind of place. And then it was like the intense organs and everything. And I'm like, oh, that's right. I got weighed down with it. You know what I mean? Like I could feel musically like that implied pressure and that shift in focus and trying to still maintain composure and professionalism while all of this is going through your mind or going on in front of you. Whatever issues I have with how things have gone down with people in my own life, you know, let alone people I'll never meet, my anger isn't at the person trying to help. Next is a song called Cigarette Ahego. Ahigo? Ahego. I know what those words are. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about it. Anyway, <clears throat> smoking's bad for you kids. Always crying, always drunk. Damn. Cigarette ahegao. Ahegao. That was close. Last night was touch and go. Damn. Need to cry about it. No, talk about it, cry if you want. Duh. Do 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 In my defense, I wasn't supposed to be around this time, so. I was not expecting that musical turn. I loved that a lot. It's so interesting to me because in the almost two years now that I've been doing these kind of videos on the internet, thank you everyone for your support, by the way. I've been realizing that the thing that would pull me into music, the messages, the stories that would like stick with me, like they're all like drenched in like a, a, a metaphor. And it's so fascinating to me how that like metaphor is like kind of been stripped away because now like people talk about this kind of stuff a lot more. There was a lot of times where the music like really hit me, non-constructive like coping mechanisms or outlets, right? Like it reminded me of being in school and like feeling like the dysfunction and what, what people needed to feel comforted at the time, you know what I mean? Like, when I was surrounded by more people, is what I'm trying to say, it's not an age thing. How we handle ourselves poorly, spilling over into handling or addressing things poorly with others, like kind of talking about how the things that you, you reach for, it's like self-destructive. That's the word I'm thinking of. Being so self-destructive and sometimes that implosion or explosion can find its way like affecting others, right? The misguided comments and stuff, or even like downplaying your own things. Like I'm looking at the lyrics now. I haven't had another episode except last night, which was touch and go, no need to cry about it. It's like being in that environment where you're not being open and honest, others aren't being receptive and supportive and everyone's either pushing their own stuff down and then by extension also pushing other people's stuff down. And it, it's like this toxic negative environment. Cause it also, the interesting musical choice for me was it started to like kind of lighten up musically at the end and I'm like, wait, when did this resolve? And then I realized, at least to me, it felt like the music was suddenly realizing it was being like sad and just, I'm fine like that. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like it felt like the mask was getting put back on. I think it's about the harm when there's a lack of uh, resources or awareness, which resources here and in the description, but like also like a lack of uh, support and understanding. Like everyone's clearly going through so much stuff and there's this essence in the air of people possibly like harming themselves or worse. I, I hear all these different voices. I hear all these different comments, experiences, but like nobody's connecting. And like I said, that like everyone's pushing their own stuff down and other people are pushing their stuff down. You, by neglecting yourself, will also miss red flags and neglect others. No one having their own resources and tools, they then also can't use those resources and tools for the person expressing that. And then they themselves also can't realize that something, like don't want to realize that something's up there or don't have the ability to. And it, it really did make me think of how much stuff I refuse to acknowledge in myself for years. And you know, I do sometimes wonder like by not even acknowledging my own stuff, how many times did I not see or not seize an opportunity to support or help somebody else. And that's kind of where that takes me. You know, acknowledging that there's like a wide spectrum of even that kind of response to these kind of things. You know, and I'm not a professional. Again, resources and links. If that makes any sense, I don't know if I'm, if I'm doing this right or doing it justice. I don't know, it feels like to me, like it's lack of information, lack of resources. It's not like on the individual's fault. Like how dare you not, it's like, you know, you weren't 
these things aren't talked about in schools. These things aren't addressed in the system like as much. You know, I, I appreciate and hope that they are at least done more so now, but it's like information that was never given that should be. It's the emotional and mental equivalent of American healthcare system where it was talking so much about like medical things like doctors. It's like also talking about mental and emotional wellness. It's like this kind of stuff should be taught. Like it still bothers me that I can say all 50 states in alphabetical order pretty quick, but like I, I couldn't tell you what depression or anxiety like truly was until I was like 26, 27. Logistically, not even like, oh, I didn't experience it until little did I know, another story for another day, but like the words, like the things to think about, that lack of knowledge being handed to you. I can tell you Alabama's first on the list of states in alphabetical order and it ends with Wyoming. Isn't that helpful? Aren't we glad we spent three weeks of that? Like, you know what I mean? Like we didn't even, in, I didn't even have like a public school, like first aid class, let alone emotional and mental health. But like, does that make sense what I'm saying? Like that information not being readily available for everybody at any age, like it, like whatever age the people are in the song, I'm saying like throughout just public education or throughout life, like it being such a taboo thing. It's like, well now here you are like playing with a lot of ill-defined concepts and experiences that you may be experiencing yourself and not even know that those things exist. If nothing else, I really admire just talking about it. And like I said, I feel very ill-equipped fundamentally to even be talking about it now. Cause it's like everything I've, learned about mental health I've had to like either experience or look up on my own, you know? I think it's about that lack of resources, facilities, information, general public knowledge. As hard as it is to like talk on this stuff and I always hope that I do it right, it's just heartbreaking. I appreciate talking about it. I hope everything I said made sense. And next we have Born To Run, one word. I grew up with a lot of Bruce Springsteen music so when I was like, born to run, as a lover of Bruce Springsteen's music, I will refrain from making those jokes. I promise. When thoughts and animals storm the capital, you'll watch these band for fun. Oh sh Are you really gonna save the world like that with your tits half out on Hop off my dick? Ha! <laughs> Are you really gonna save the world this way? Crying like a kid every single day. Me. People are in pain, what's wrong with you? Hell yes! Go off! I learned my rights from you. Yeah, holy sh Soft boys and their succulents. Soft boys, that's me. Not me, not me. Oh, couldn't relate with the last lyric. Holy f go off. That might be my favorite one so far, but also at the same time, it's very scary. I'm sorry, this was uploaded to YouTube in November. When was this, like, that was spooky as hell. But I love that sentiment of, are you really gonna save the world dressed like that? Yeah. Are you really gonna save the world like that, being sad about everything? Yes, cause it's sad and I would like everything to stop being sad, please. Let's fix it and improve it. There are parts of this though, I, I don't feel comfortable talking about given what's happened recently. It's weird realizing that I'm no longer a part of the youngest voting generation. It, it's a little it's a little more eerie when you realize just it's not fair to see uh, to see how we the young kids were downtrodden now happening to the current young kids and it's like now it's not even fun because I can't even take that personally anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just bothers me. Good for you. Like I don't know it's like Pushing back on the people who are like anti-empathy and decency. You know what I mean? I know obviously it's very much about a part of life I know nothing about, but like, are you really gonna save the world like that with your tits half out on Instagram? I can see the person, I can, well, I can see the comment. I don't think that person really has the courage to say it to one's face. That criticizing a younger generation. It's kind of hard to be a little older and see it happening to the one, to the generation below me and it's like, oh, it wasn't even like we were special enough to be the one that was shit on. That just happens, does it? Good for you for like advocating for like being heard, being seen, like pushing back, hop off my d Cause this whole thing makes me feel sick and you're mean to kids, why can't you just quit picking on them? Life and liberty, sometimes property, they try to, the right to try to feel good. Like asserting yourself, but staying on topic. It's like, why are you pushing back on equal opportunity for everybody? Are you saying don't feel empathy for others when they're in pain? Is that really what you wanna be saying right now? Or focusing on how I'm dressed? Like, shut up. I really love that 
spirit of it. I'd like to do my best to not contribute to that pain. There's definitely parts of the lyrics that read differently now. That's not your fault. They make me uncomfortable and itchy and stressed, and that's not your fault. I loved uh, or Life and Liberty, Sometimes Property, and the right to just feel good. I loved that a lot, giving the finger to the housing market. and I, It's my fault, really. I shouldn't have gotten that student loan and bought so much avocado toast. <laughs> Oops. It's not like we had a budget class in school or finances or taxes, but I could tell you all the states and now I think it's just, it's talking about like how dismissive and dismissive and rude a certain mindset can be. What was it like? Are you really gonna change the world by being sad? And it's like, yeah, it's called caring about things. I really appreciate that. Like, like I said, like advocating for just empathy and understanding and not only taking a lot of very great jabs at toxic masculinity in general, like just breaking it down to bare bones. It's like, crying all the time. It's like, yeah, there's people in pain. Next. There's something about about it I just love. I just, like I said, a lot of this song now has some of the lyrics just feel a different way. Given some of the things that's transpired, it just makes me, un it just makes, I don't like, I just don't, I'm choosing not to talk about it because it makes me stressed and uncomfortable. And that's okay. It's not Penelope Scott's fault. It's not my fault either. I'm also sorry that we didn't stop them from picking on us and now they're picking on you. That is something that like does kind of sit with me sometimes where it's like, we really didn't advocate for ourselves. It's something I think about a lot. I enjoyed the song a lot. It's just, it's, it's a little hard for me to talk about these kind of things right now, but I really appreciate how positive it felt too, like assertive it was. Like it felt very confident and powerful. I'm just itchy. Oh no, there's an oomplout. Is it just still just rat? Is it, do you say it differently? I don't know what the umplaut does. I just recognize it because I sang one song in, in German once for a vocal competition. Hooslein <laughs> auf der Heiden. Don't remember what it means anymore, but that song was about a rose, a rose and a lady, or a rose having thorns. <laughs> and we're closing out the night with rat. I come from scientists and atheists and white men who kill God. What? They taught me everything, just like a daddy should. <laughs> when the real tragedy is half of it was true. Oh. We're elitist, we're as flawed as any church. Yes. I wanted to be you and do what you do. Damn. Oh, that's okay. I, I'm so sorry. But I don't want to see the stars if they're just one more piece of land. Yes. So fuck your tunnels, fuck your cars, fuck your rockets, fuck your cars again. You oh. Oh, sh I thought so, but like, I didn't want to like name names or get specific. I'm so, oh, I'm so itchy. I don't want to talk about this stuff. Jesus. Take me to the moon. Ooh. I feel so used. Damn, but like, also thank you for talking about it. Like, I'm not mad. I just, we're getting way out of my comfort zone, wheelhouse and element and realm of knowledge here. I just want that on record. I'm not a very smart person. But I really liked kind of going on that journey. Humans are flawed and the concept of like, I thought the idea was everyone could get to go to space, not colonizing the stars. You know, it's like, how is this different than anything else? You're gonna manifest destiny all over. How are we not learning from our own histories? I don't know how to talk about this stuff. I'm just being honest. It's like, I, I got it. You got really specific when you uh, brought up brands, not sponsored, just feeling betrayed and then realizing that you know whether by vocally supporting it or you talked about finances and money so even possibly like financially supporting it like you've kind of just enabled more of the things that you thought you were avoiding colonizing the stars was the biggest one for me like i said i don't know much about this kind of stuff i wasn't a gamestop boy um <laughs> GameStop person, that was rude. There's something about it where it was like, really thinking that you understood something and then that heartbreak of realizing that even if one starts with the best intentions, which who's to say, that realization, you know, the, the man behind the curtain, the Wizard of Oz is not the Wizard of Oz, just a scared and confused old man trying to get home on a hot air balloon. I liked the, the honesty of it, kind of going through it personally and like not shying away from it. Like it wasn't this like, I told you so, I knew it all along. It's like, no, I fell for this. You could really feel that like angry frustration. Like it really felt at times like the vocals, like it almost sounded like angry tears to me. Does that make sense? And I don't know, that's kind of how I felt about all of the songs that I listened to today from her where like, 
Penelope Scott just has a way of like, it feels like dialogue. Like you can feel like the raw free range organic emotion. No preservatives, no sugars. And I really love that. My tuition is paid by blood. Like, I don't know your life, but like, it made me think like maybe it is about like you're like checking your own privilege like you just followed this or like she said like i loved living here so maybe she is from like that part of like california the silicon valley mindset if not the actual area that everyone hangs out in there the place where they grow apples and turn them into phones <laughs> what the orchard. The orchard. It, it's just, it's heartbreaking because it's like, yeah, there's a while where a lot of people felt very hopeful for a lot of things. Like, yeah, I think it's like a little bit of like checking your own privilege. Your time and energy and emotions are valuable too, but like if you were able to invest something beyond that, even like that's a privilege in and of itself. So maybe even acknowledging like it's privilege that I can be angry about this in this way in the first place. I, like I said, I appreciate that. Thinking everything was in the name of the public good and that like death of a hero kind of feeling. You know what I mean? Like I said, these are all things I'm not very educated on. Not only expressing where your headspace is now, but admitting where it was. It's that ownership of it, illustrating it. Like it, it'll help not only you learn moving forward, but others learn moving forward. Like this feels like very frustrating and painful like learning experience but like you've learned from it as well like i don't want learning experience to sound condescending by any means like i can feel the the growth and understanding like formulating there i really enjoy like what what gets like pulled out of me from listening to her music i love how specific it gets with the emotions i love the kind of the journey that it takes me on and i really admire the subject matter that she takes on it all feels like an advocacy for understanding a lot of intention and passion and emotion there and it's felt so much. And it really does, like, it, it makes me care with you. Like, I really enjoy, like, just hearing what you have to say and feeling what you felt or a variation of what you felt. You know, advocating for understanding and communication and acknowledging your own missteps or regrets along the way as well. Or when something isn't working as well as when something is. I really enjoyed this. This is really interesting. Thank you again. Wouldn't have even heard of her without suggestions from you guys. So thank you again, guys. But yeah, uh, there you guys go. What do you guys think? What do you think of my thoughts? What do you think of the songs? Are there more Penelope Scott songs I should check out in the future? Are there artists I should check out? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video if you did. Subscribe if you want more. Thank you so much for watching, guys. But I really did enjoy that. I hope that was felt. I just feel so out of it today. Don't forget, as always, there are links in the description for education and resources on Black Lives Matter, The Trevor Project, and Mental Health Resources and Crisis Lines should you or someone you know need them. Be safe out there. Please drink water. Don't forget to wear a mask if you have to go out. Be mindful of others. And remember to take care of yourselves, please.